Hello there, this is the fourth video looking at the English language paper one and in today's session we're going to be focusing on question four. This is the last question on the reading section of the paper and it's probably one of the most significant questions and I would say the differentiator between students getting a grade three and a grade four and a grade four and a grade five. There's a couple of reasons for this. If we look here, as we have done previously, this question is worth the same amount of marks as questions one to three put together. But it's not the same amount of time as the three put together. It is 20 marks in 20 minutes. What is often the case in we, when we look through mock exams is that students spend far too long focusing on questions two and three and actually don't have any time really to do question four and so only score one or two marks on that. That is not what you should be doing. This is why it's really important to stay focused on these que uh, on the timings so that you give yourself enough time for this question. Now, you shouldn't though go straight and answer question four at the start of the paper, which I know a number of students ask. That is because as you will see as we walk through this question, Everything that you've done in two and three will help you to answer question four. This question is about using your analysis of language and of structure effectively in order to do well. Please make sure that you've got pen and paper when you're uh, making some notes now. And I've also in the description of this video got um, some tools to be able to help you to, for some resources to follow with that as well. So just to begin with, two quick questions just to test your knowledge on everything that we've done so far, making sure you should know all of the answers to these questions to make sure that you are both smart and you're exam smart for it. I suggest you pause this video now and have a quick go at answering these questions. So to go through the answers for these questions, how many marks is question three worth? It is worth eight marks. Name me two language techniques you could analyse in question two. You could analyse similes, metaphors, alliteration, verbs, nouns, adjectives. Any technique that you've looked at so far um, in your literature studies would work for this. What are the five keywords in structure? It's really important to understand what these mean, because if we know these, we will have a good structure for our answer for question three. They are focus, shift, establishment, development and conclusion. Focus, shift, establishment, development and conclusion. Question four, what is meant by the word disequilibrium? That is when something in a story starts to go wrong. Now, in the, you will find with the extracts that often things will start well at an equilibrium, but then they will shift to a disequilibrium, a problem will occur. And that's a great word to be able to use for question three as well. Finally, how many minutes do you have to answer question two? You have 12 minutes. So remember, there's lots to be able to do, but we've got to make sure we do it within the time. Mark these, make sure that you've corrected any mistakes, but well done if you got all of them correct. Moving forward, looking at question four, which we're focusing on today, worth 20 marks and you have 20 minutes to complete it. Focus this part of your answer on the second half of the source from lines 18 to the end. A couple of things that are really important. Again, like with question one and two, there are being specific. You've got to look at the specific lines that you've been looked at. You will then be given a statement from, uh, by, from a student about that part of the text. And it is up to you to evaluate whether you agree or disagree. Your first tip, you must make sure that to a certain extent you agree, because if you disagree fully, you're really not enabling yourself to do the level of analysis that you need to for this question. Also, contrary to subjects like history and RE, you do not need to weigh up both sides of the argument. That will not automatically give you more marks. You could 100% agree with the statement and still score yourselves 20 out of 20. But as I said before, I would recommend you not disagreeing fully because that will probably go against what the question is asking you to do. So we're going to be looking at a different extract today. This is a complete extract, but as you will see, we wouldn't be asked to look at the whole thing. We are in fact, with the question, going to be asked to look at just these five paragraphs. So these five paragraphs here. Here is a question that you might have. 
task. As you will see, you're going to be asked to look at one specific section. Here is what a student has said, and you are asked to agree and to what extent that would be. Below, here are the five steps that I would argue would make a, a successful answer. So for these to be effective, let's go through each of them. You need to circle the keywords in the question. And I would suggest you pause the video and do that for me now. So the keywords I would say are as follows. The first five paragraphs, you need to know what you're looking at and only those sections. If you answer outside those sections, you're not going to score any marks. What are you looking to analyze? You're looking to see if you think the, author, the narrator doesn't remember it properly. And again, how far do you agree with the statement for this? So we're going to look at the first three paragraphs to begin with, just to model this idea um, for you first of all. I'm going to give you one example, and then I'm gonna ask you to do exactly the same. So we're looking, it's hard to picture the scene because the narrator doesn't remember it properly. We need to try and look as we're reading through this to be able to find anything that either agrees or disagrees with this statement. I would suggest you pause the video now to be able to read through this and have a go. Here is one example that we found. No, wait, I've got that wrong. So we circle the quotation that we think is important, and then we would write our analysis for this. Here we're saying the declarative shows that he is uncertain about what he is saying, thus he doesn't remember it properly. I'm going to break down exactly what I've done with my analysis here. What I've done first of all is I've identified the technique that is used in the sentence. A declarative is a sentence when you are declaring something, when you are telling me something. I've got that wrong. You are telling me that. That makes it a declarative. Shows that is the effect that comes with it. So this is exactly like what you would have in question two, your identification of language and then the specific effect. But the addition that you get in question four is you have to make sure it is linked back to the statement. That's why I've highlighted this word here, thus. Thus is another word for therefore, but it's a great way to make sure that you are linking your language analysis back specifically to the question, because that is what you are looking at on the mark scheme. You are trying to make sure that you're doing language and structure analysis, like with questions two and three, but the difference is that question four is in relation to a specific statement that someone has made. I'm going to highlight one more particular example on this uh, three paragraphs. I suggest you pause the video now, see if you can do what I've just done here. Highlight a phrase, pick out the language technique, give the effect, and then talk to me thus how it links back to the statement. So one more example you might be able to find. I can see the showers of sparks they throw up. Now, I can see, you could talk about that. Some people might argue that's another declarative. Absolutely. You could also argue that this is sensory imagery. Sensory imagery is when you use the senses. So you talk about sight, sound, touch, taste, or smell. Sensory imagery helps to show that he has a clear image. Thus, he can remember it properly. We've identified the technique. We've said the effect. We've said thus and linked it back to the statement. A very clear and concise way to make sure we've got some quotations for this. So those are two quotations, but ultimately this is worth 20 marks. So we're going to look, we're going to need a few more to be able to score ourselves higher. See if you can find me any particular examples in this passage to be able to support it. Identify the qu quotation, give me the technique, show what it implies, and then thus link back to the statement. Pause the video now so you can have a go at that. A couple of examples you might be able to find here. When is this? The rhetorical question suggesting he is confused about the reality, thus doesn't remember it properly. Another rhetorical question, reinforcing, to use that word from question two, showing again, reinforcing the sense that he doesn't remember it properly. The use of the pronoun something, well done if you got this, something implies he doesn't have specific knowledge, thus he might not remember it properly.
Those are three examples that you could find, which means in total, we've got ourselves five different quotations that we could use for this. So this is how the start of an answer might look. You do not want this to be your incomplete answer, because if this is your complete answer, you're not going to have as wide a range as we need. Remember, we've had five quotations identified, so we'd want to be able to analyze all of those. I suggest you pause the video now to read through this answer and have a think about each of these four questions identified, because this is a particularly strong start to a, an answer. So why is this a particularly strong start to an answer? How has the student started? I agree. You have answered the question directly to begin with. If you put I agree and you only put that, so you completely screwed up your timing. If you wrote that, you might get yourself one mark because you are at least getting a bit of evaluation in there. This opening paragraph simply needs to be introducing your perspective to this. I agree that the narrator's uh, confusion throughout the extract makes it seem that he doesn't remember the scene properly. Where have they taken the words from? They've taken the words from the question. And that is all you need to do in your opening paragraph is just tell me what evaluation you have made. When you move on to your second paragraph, that is going to need to be the analysis. What different ideas are analysed? You need to analyse potentially the language, but also the structure. This is looking at both of those ideas, because remember, we said that this is worth the same amount of marks as questions one to three. So actually, we're looking for both language and structural analysis. The somewhat confused structure of the narrative does not enable the reader to create a clear picture. So therefore, you're analysing the structure there. And don't forget here, what has been included? Your specific language techniques, your subject terminology, as we identified in our previous examples. Use of repetition keeps the reader on their toes. The repetition of perhaps and the admitting it is so difficult reinforce the confusion. So as you will see, our first paragraph, very short, just giving our sense of evaluation. And then from then on, you're doing your analysis similar to what we see in questions two and three. So this is how, again, just summarising the ideas that we've got together for that. Everything that we've said for question two and three still stands for this question for things you should not be saying. All of these things in question two, vague. All of these things for question three are vague. So you should be avoiding these sentences as well. Instead, as we've said before, a brief paragraph agreeing or disagree. Do you agree? Do you partially agree or partially disagree with the statement? That should be your opening sentence. Explain very briefly why. Just making sure that you're using words from the sentence. I agree with the statement because I think the narrator doesn't remember it properly. Very simple introduction, two sentences showing your sense of evaluation. I then suggest your second two paragraphs answered in a similar way to questions two and three. So we're using our quotation, our, our sentence starters that we had for question two, exactly the same thing again. But do remember to try and include the word thus as well to link it back to the statement. I would then suggest your fourth paragraph, answer it in a similar way to you might answer question three. Structurally, think about those ideas. The reason why we put this paragraph as the last paragraph is because students sometimes find this a little bit more conceptually difficult than the language analysis. But as you'll see, in order to be aiming for those grade four or that grade five, you should be evaluating very quickly at the start. You should be saying your language analysis and identifying using those phrases rather than the vague ones. And if you can, trying to mention some structural techniques and some structural features as well. Do notice that you do not need to do a conclusion for this question. That will not help you get any more marks. A brief introduction is really strong to be able to show that sense of evaluation, but the conclusion doesn't really add anything at this point. Because remember, we've only got 20 minutes to get ourselves the 20 marks. I hope you found this video useful. I suggest you write up your analysis based on the previous question. Feel free to send it through to me to be able to look through your answers. But I hope you found this video useful and thank you very much for watching.